our building was swaying back and forth. There was smoke coming up the stairwell. It's heartbreaking flying over people with dogs and children and they're waiting for help. Where we're standing right now probably had 10 feet of storm surge. It has been nearly two years since Hurricane Ian hit Southwest Florida, yet here in the town center of Fort Myers Beach, the damage can be seen just about anywhere you look. Businesses that are still struggling to reopen with the slow rebuilding process and the island's iconic pier still untouched. Hurricane Ian delivered a devastating double punch to Southwest Florida. Catastrophic category five winds and historic storm surge, an incredibly damaging and deadly combination, but much different than what we saw here in Houston during Hurricane Harvey. Harvey was, I think, a slightly weaker storm. Um, but they obviously had two very different kind of the effects. Ian and Harvey, two very different hurricanes impacting two vastly different areas, but both having the same outcome, utter devastation. This bullseye of 40 inches of rain affecting millions of people. While Houston was spared the worst of Harvey's wind and storm surge, we're just as prone to a catastrophic impact from a storm just like Ian. We have this um, platform that sits um, kind of along our coastline and you guys have the same thing uh, up around the Houston area. You have all this water that's pulled up in front of the storm and then once you get up into that step, it exacerbates. We've seen that exact scenario play out before with Hurricane Ike and with other past hurricanes far before modern technology. We found some historic records of 20 feet for the, I think it was the 1900 Galveston storm. But today we have technology, including this, a $100,000 drone. And what's the point in all this money flying through the sky looking at the beach? Well, um, our work here is sort of helping communities determine how Ian impacted uh, the coast and then learn from those impacts. The drone and LIDAR sensor on the bottom are being used to map the Florida Gulf Coast before, immediately after, and years following Hurricane Ian. The mapping we're doing sort of reveals vulnerabilities along the coast. Vulnerabilities like this. Areas of the beach badly eroded by storm surge, which can undermine buildings, leading to even more destruction. The storm surge actually causes problems twice. Once coming in, the so-called flood surge, and once going out, the ebb surge and that returning water created oh, horrendous conditions. The worst of the erosion is near the beach access points, purposeful cuts and dunes which are meant to protect us. There's no reason why um, beach crossovers can't be constructed. While some researchers use technology, others are tapping into Mother Nature's wisdom. Nature does more in resilience than it does in resistance. Wynn Everham from the Water School at Florida Gulf Coast University is studying how nature handles hurricanes in hopes to find translations to human nature. One of the answers is that different species handle it in different ways. One of the best translations from the ecosystem to humans is trees to houses. This palm tree can live along the coast because it's hardy and it can weather those hurricanes, but an oak tree or a sycamore tree or even a cherry blossom, you don't see those here along the coast because they can't weather the storm. So these trees, they have grown to become resistance and it's the same with our building. Think of like that little one story beach bungalow as a oak tree or a sycamore tree. It can't withstand the hurricanes. So instead let's build resistance to the hurricanes. They're never gonna go away. So let that palm tree be that big house on those 20 foot stilts. That way they have a better chance of weathering a storm. We had Donna in 60. We 44 years later had Charlie. 11 years later we had Irma. Five years later we had Ian. A trend that keeps first responders busier and busier. Texas A&M Task Force One is by far the busiest team in the country. Director Jeff Saunders manages this $7 million cache of equipment. He's been to every major hurricane in the last 20 years, including both Ian and Harvey. Is there an easier type of hurricane to respond to? One that goes into non-populated areas. Whether it's historic rains from Harvey or inundating storm surge from Ian. It's still going to involve the same amount of search and rescue. The same goes for law enforcement. There's people out here waving for help trying to get out of here. These pilots with the Lee County Sheriff's Office flying us today were the first in the sky after Hurricane Ian. And there were things still like actively burning down. Even the region's leading law enforcement agency is learning lessons and sharing what they learned with other departments. Every single day at noon, I delivered updates to our citizens. One of those messages, communication. Another, 
cracking down on crime. How did you approach looting during and post Ian? The figurehead of the agency needs to come out very, very public immediately. You come and you try to hurt one of our residents or steal, you're going to jail. But it's not just crime. First responders had to evacuate themselves as Ian bore down on Southwest Florida, leaving people who refused to evacuate in their homes, or many wouldn't make it. Storm surge is very real and it killed a lot of people. On the island of Fort Myers Beach, recovery and rebuilding is everywhere you look, but it took a while to get here. On an island where one third of the buildings were destroyed and not a single vehicle survived, residents were stranded off the island. Make sure you have a really good plan, not only to get out away from the storm, but to be able to come back to your community after the storm. But their biggest issue is out of Vice Mayor Jim Adderholt's hands. It's an issue we're dealing with right here in Houston. Our primary uh, obstacle to recovery has been the insurance companies. And I think for your folks and your, your, your viewers in Texas, they need to be prepared for the insurance industry to be non-responsive. With every hurricane comes a new set of lessons we can all learn from. From Florida to Texas, each time a community is knocked down, it can help another build back quicker and stronger. In Southwest Florida, they're not there yet, but they're close. I call it a functional paradise. On Fort Myers Beach, Florida, Gage Golding, KPRC2 News.